Hey guys, this is Jiranima Reader and I'm back with another video. Today we are going to continue the book Thea Stilton, The Roman Holiday. So guys, it's a long time since I've made a video. From now on, I will try to continuously upload the video, but I'm not sure. So why delay? Let's begin today's video. Chapter 16. Who could it be? Meanwhile, the others were still busy looking for the book upstairs. Hey Coco, did you find anything? Nikki asked, approaching her friend. Colette sighed. No, not yet, unfortunately. You? Nikki shook her head. Me neither. Nikki, can you give me a hand? Flaminia asked as she struggled to lift a huge box that was blocking the lower part of the shelf. Of course, Nikki replied. Where could it be? Colette mumbled. We have looked everywhere. Then she noticed an old cabinet in the hallway and she tried to see what was inside it. But instead, the glass door of the cabinet reflected something outside it. The silhouette of someone rushing quickly out of the library. Who's that leaving? She wondered aloud, confused. We haven't solved the last riddle yet. She stuck her head into the hallway to get a better look and she realized it wasn't one of her friends or someone from the Italian team. Instead, it was a strange mouse dressed in blue. Hey! Colette called after him, but the mouse didn't stop. Colette, Lucas called to her. Did you notice that stranger leaving the library just now? Colette asked him. I thought we were the only ones here. I didn't see anyone, Luca replied hurriedly. Have you seen Alexandra and Violet by any chance? We can't find them anywhere. No, Colette replied in surprise. I have been in this room the whole time and I haven't seen them in ages. We can't figure out where they ended up, Luca said, sounding worried. It's not like Violet to disappear in the middle of a project, Colette said. Maybe they left to look for more clues somewhere else. Did you try calling to them? Alexander left his phone on the table. Over there, Luca replied, and we tried calling Violet, but there was no answer. A clue. A mysterious figure left the library in a hurry. Who was it? And what were they doing in the library after it was closed? How strange, Colette said. But if Alexander left his phone here, surely they haven't gone far. That's true, Luca agreed. The others are looking in the courtyard. Will you help me look in the other rooms? Of course, Colette exclaimed. There's no time to lose. Chapter 17 A Secret Passage Meanwhile in the basement, Alexandra and Violet tried to come up with a plan. Alexandra pulled on the door one more time. It's useless, he squeaked. The door wouldn't budge. What bad luck, Violet said. Just when we had found the book, we get stuck down here with no way to reach our friends. There has to be another way out, don't you think? Violet and Alessandro began to search the basement carefully, looking for a second exit. After a thorough search, though they found themselves right back where they had started. There's no other door, Alessandro said, disappointed. I know, Violet added with a sigh. There isn't even a window down here. Feeling disheartened, Violet sat down in a corner against the wall. Suddenly, she felt a chilly draft at her back. Surprised, she returned to see where the cool air was coming from. There seemed to be a crack in the smooth stone wall. Alessandro, she said. Can you come over here? Sure, he replied quickly. Did you find something? Do you feel that breeze? Violet asked. It seems to be coming from the wall. Alessandro took a step closer. Yes, I feel it, he said, surprised. There must be an opening back here. He knocked on the wall. It seems thinner right here, he observed. Violet knocked as well. It sounds hollow, she agreed. The two friends began to push the huge slab of stone until it started to move. Maybe we found a secret passage, Alessandro said. With one last push, the stone wall opened up to reveal a staircase carved in stone. Look, Violet exclaimed. Yes, Alessandro squeaked happily. We are free. And with that, he scampered up the steps. Violet followed closely behind as the two mice climbed the light, got brighter and brighter. Finally, they reached a gate. Alessandro pulled it and with his paw, he moved it aside. This is the library courtyard, Violet exclaimed, stunned. She popped out of the passage right behind her friend. Why, Alessandro, Paulina exclaimed, running toward them. What were you doing down there? We looked for you to everywhere, Mario said. We were worried. Everyone gathered in the courtyard. 
where the Thea sisters gave Violet a big hug. It's a long story, but we can tell you about it later, Alexandra said. The important thing is that we found the book we were looking for. Violet held it out to show to everyone. Now we can solve the riddle, she squeaked happily. Amazing, Nikki cried. Let's go back inside. And yes, and let's hurry, Mario added. Time is about to run out. Chapter 18 We are almost there. Once they were back inside the library, Alexander returned to the basement archive to retrieve the keys. But to his great surprise, the door was closed and the keys were gone. They are gone? Violet asked when he told her. But how? Maybe they fell somewhere when the door stamped closed. I have no idea, Alexander replied with a shrug. Let's look for the keys later. We can't waste any more time. Meanwhile, I'll ask Giovanni to stop by and lock up the library. But right now, we need to focus on figuring out the puzzle in this book. Violet placed the ancient volume they had found in the basement on the table in front of everyone. Do you remember what page we were supposed to look at in the clue? She asked her friends. Yes, page 30, Paulina replied confidently. Violet carefully turned to page 30 and began to read in silence. Everyone held their breath. This section is about medical cures and the passage on this page talks about water treatments. Violet said at last, Hmm, water, Collette said. Maybe the last spot is the Tiber River? Or oh, maybe it is a pool, Tom exclaimed. I don't think so, Rita said slowly. Did you solve the riddle then? Flaminia asked her teammate. Rita nodded. I think we know to go to the baths, she said. Baths? Collette repeated. Of course, Nikki exclaimed. The baths of Caracalla. The two clues only make sense if you put them together. Emperor Caracalla and a water cure means the answer is the baths that he built, right? Rita nodded, a smile on her snout. What a, where are these baths? Nikki asked. About a 15 minute walk from here, came Mario's reply. Paulina looked at her watch. It's 6.47 right now, she said. We only have 13 minutes. If we leave right now, we can make it, Nikki said with determination. Let's go. Who knows the way? Pam asked. I do, Mario squeaked. Follow me. A moment later, the group was camping at full speed toward the last stop of the games, the Baths of Caracalla. Chapter 19 By a Whisker 57, 58, 59, it's 7 o'clock, Professor Angel announced. I officially declare this the end of International Archaeology Games. She handed the stopwatch back to arrest. And the winner of this year's competition is, Here we are, cried the Thea sisters and the Italian team as they sprinted from the main road into the bars of Caracalla. Did we make it on time? Colette asked, breathless. The professor shook her head. I'm very sorry, but time is up. You missed it by a whisker. We won and you didn't even finish the challenge in time, Milani commented with an air of satisfaction. You should have dropped out while you had the chance. Listen here, Rita began, irritated. But Flaminia put out a paw st to stop her sister. Let it go, Rita, she said. We lost. Unfortunately, the competition is over, Orest confirmed. The first to arrive was the French team, followed by the team from Moscow and the team from Tokyo. I'm very sorry, but the teams from Rome and from Mousework Academy didn't qualify because they arrived after the deadline. What a shame, Colette said, and we tried so hard to make it. Violet sighed, if we hadn't been locked in the basement at the library, we probably would have made it. Excuses, excuses, Melini taunted, but Professor Angel cut her off. The awards, the award ceremony will take place at the university, she told the teams. I'll meet you all there in the Great Hall in exactly one hour. Chapter 20 A Strange Coincidence The Thea sisters and the Italian students were upset and disappointed. This stinks worse than the moldy cheese, Luca said, sighing. We were only a few seconds too late. It's really unfair, Alessandro complained. It's not our fault we were locked in the basement. Sometimes one small setback is enough to keep you from reaching your goals, Paulina said. But at least we know we did our best. Violet reminded her friends, and it was an incredible experience, Colette said, smiling. The group of students was heading toward a bus that would take back them to the university, when Colette noticed something strange out of the corner of her eye. What's wrong, Coco? Nikki asked, noticing her friend's expression. So that's who that mouse was, Colette exclaimed. She pointed to a rodent dressed in blue and talking to Milani nearby. What do you mean, Coco? 
Pam asked, confused. That's Millennial's driver, Colette squeaked, and I'm always positive he was the rodent I saw leave the library in a hurry while we were looking for Y and Alessandro. Holy cheese! Pam exclaimed. That's a strange coincidence. It seems too strange for it to be a coincidence, Violet said thoughtfully. By now, the members of the other team had left the baths. Violet watched the mouse dressed in blue as he exited in the opposite direction. As he walked, a small shiny object fell to the ground. Violet quickly dashed over to pick it up. Look, she said, holding it up for her friends to see. He dropped this. It was a small keychain in the shape of an anchor with two keys attached. Wait a minute. Those are the keys to the library, Alessandro said, stunned. Then I was right, Colette exclaimed. That was the mouse I saw leaving the library. I don't understand, Luca said. Why would Milani's driver be in the library with us? And what is he doing with the keys? Are we really sure these are the keys to the library? Mario asked, doubtful. Maybe he just has the same keychain. Let's check, Alessandro suggested. I'll call my friend Giovanni, the library guard. A moment later, Alessandro hung up the phone. Good news, mouselets, he said, smiling. Giovanni lives nearby and can be here in a few minutes. As soon as Giovanni arrived, he pulled out a set of keys. This is my spare set, he explained. They are identical to these, so they must be the ones I loaned to you, Alessandro. Now it makes all sense, Violet said, her eyes lightening up. It does, Paulina asked. But how? Remember when we were heading toward the library and I had the feeling someone was following us? The Thea sisters nodded. I think it was Melanie's driver, Violet continued. He must have been keeping an eye on us. What? Pam gasped in surprise. But why? Think about it, Violet said. Melanie wanted to win at all costs and her team was behind. She could have asked her driver to follow us and slow us down. Of course, Alessandra chimed in. Colette saw that Rodin in the library. He must have watched Violet and me go down to the basement. Then he closed the door behind us, locked it and took the key. And that's when I saw him dart off, Colette added. If that's really the way things went, we need to tell Professor Angel before the award ceremony, Flaminia said. Milani's team cheated. So only this much for this video friends. I had a very lovely time reading to you. Till then, goodbye and face reveal at 500 subscribers. Bye-bye.